there were a salamander so remarkable? What if there were a salamander that didn't even need lungs? The truth is, there are salamanders like this, and there is a good chance that you have them in your backyard. Let's go back and talk about a different salamander group first. A couple months back, I published a video about spotted salamanders. Link in the description. I mentioned how members of Ambistoma and Dicompodon are frequently called mole salamanders. The family Ambistomatidae has some defining characteristics of being relatively large in many cases and being known to eat small invertebrates and smaller salamanders. They are also known for sometimes being neoteny. Neoteny means when salamanders miss a certain developmental stage, for instance, when axolotls spend their whole life underwater. But Ambistomatidae have lungs. Plethodontidae doesn't. Plethodontidae is a large family of salamanders with some pretty basic defining characteristics. First of all, they have quite a slender body, which also leads to the small limbs they possess. Secondly, the length of the tail is in many cases longer than the actual body of the salamander. A last defining characteristic frequently paired with Plethodon today is that the salamanders in this group almost always have four toes for the forelimbs and five for their hind limbs. Now that you know what they generally look like, Let's talk about them not having lungs, not possessing any lungs. Unlike the clawed salamanders or Onchidoctalus, okay, I don't know how to pronounce this, of Asia, which use paratoid glands, plethodontids breathe through their skin. Just to be clear, they also breathe through a mucous membrane in their mouth as well, but mostly through their skin. Because of their ability to breathe through skin, they have become more terrestrial than other salamanders. If you recall, I mentioned that you might have these salamanders in your backyard, and that's true. Their range is extremely complex as they exist in the very western Pacific coast of the United States, eastern United States, regions throughout Central and Northern South America, Italy, and South Korea. Possibly the most well-known of the species of Plethodon today in the U.S. is the redback salamander. While it normally adopts the classic red patterning along the back, occasionally one can observe its lead back face, in which the salamander is completely black with a sort of iridescence. Plethodon cinereus is found in the northeastern United States around the Appalachian Mountains. Another very common species of Plethodon today is the two line salamander. In this case, I'm not going to talk about the northern species. Yurtsia bislineata lives in temperate and freshwater habitats, characterized by the textbook lines running down the back. It shares a similar range to the redback salamander, but is slightly more northeastern, covering a large portion of eastern Canada. This next species I was only able to capture with a few pictures, but this is the long-tailed salamander or Eurytia longicauda. It is found with a speckled pattern and is known to be a cave salamander. As shown with this specimen, they tend to enjoy the rocky or woody crevices that retain moisture. It is well known for its very long tail. These are only some examples of the more eastern plethodontids, but they are a very diverse group and I would love to share more species like this dusky salamander later on in my channel. Besides, make sure to remember that I have new content on Know Your Herbs every single Monday and Friday in the form of YouTube shorts as well as the videos. I'll see you next time.